بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. First of all, I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessed opportunity to be able to sh uh, share with our brothers in delivering and spreading the message of true Islam and the important pillars of the faith of Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those people who put this lecture together and gave us this opportunity to spread the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam based upon kitabillah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. So in this lecture I'd like to talk about the shahada, which is the testimony of faith. And the shahada is very easy to pronounce. And it weighs heavily on the scales of our good deeds. And it requires from us as human beings, certain preconditions in order to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in sharing this message about the shahada, I'm going to give you information which I have compiled into a short treatise which was meant to be a concise explanation of the first part of the testimony of faith which forms the basis of Islamic monotheism. However, it must be noted that it is not sufficient for one to declare the first part of the testimony of faith without bearing witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah was the last prophet and messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and believing in all that which is entailed within that testimony. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاعْتَبَعُونِي يَحْبِبَكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذَنُوبَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتابه الكريم Say, if you love Allah, then follow me, and Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. Ibn Rajib, rahimahullah ta'ala, related that Hassan al-Basri from the Tabi'een said, The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Verily we love our Lord with the utmost reverence, and the law is pleased with the slave that loves him based upon knowledge. Therefore Allah sent down that verse, and from it is known that the testimony that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah is not complete except with the testimony that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if it is known that the love for Allah is not complete except by loving that which he loves and hating that which he hates, then there is no way of knowing what he loves and hates except by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who informed mankind about what Allah loves and hates by following what he commanded and staying away from what he prohibited. Then loving Allah is absolutely or loving Allah absolutely necessitates loving his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and believing in, in him and following him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the complete testimony of faith involves bearing witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the key that a person uses to enter the fold of Islam and it's also the key to paradise. By uttering this sacred testimony, one enters the fold of Islam, and this statement is the key to paradise. However, there are conditions that this testimony uh, involves, and acting upon the monotheistic beliefs. 
in this regard, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala said, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to the polytheists and called them to the banner of monotheism. And it is that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And what is meant by those words is its full meaning, meaning acting upon it, not just pronouncing it. Moving on to the meaning of La ilaha illallah. This is imperative as Muslims that we understand the, the true meaning of La ilaha illallah, that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Many of the religions that claim to hold monotheistic beliefs differ over the concept of who God is and what denotes worship. However, Islamic monotheism or uh, Tawheed offers a very clear concept of who the Creator is and that He possesses divine names and attributes and is the only deity worthy of worship. The meaning of the testimony of faith in Islam makes up an important part of the Muslim creed and is essential to understand because it is the key to paradise as we've already mentioned. The Prophet wasallam said, whoever dies and knows that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah will enter paradise. Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala relates that Qadi Iyad, one of the pious predecessors explains that this narration of the Prophet wasallam is used by many of the sects like the Khawarij and the Mu'tazila and Murjia to substantiate their creeds. What is most important for our argument, however, and a common claim in our time, is that the extreme Murjia assert that it is sufficient to pronounce the testimony of faith, even if one does not believe it in his or her heart or act upon the tenets of faith associated with it. For example, you may hear a Muslim woman say, I don't have to wear the hijab. Allah knows what's in my heart. Or my faith is stronger than that and it is complete in my heart. How often have we heard our brothers say, my iman is strong even, even though I cut my beard. Or that practice is only, uh, or that practice is only from the sunnah. So I don't need to do it. In this way, a Muslim can begin to belittle the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and understate its importance. And eventually, they can begin to make the unlawful practices as lawful until they eventually leave Islam. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, sins are the means to kufr. Al-ma'asi barid al-kufr. He said that the sins, they are a wasila or they are a means to disbelief. And Tawheed, uh, therefore taking sins, uh, if you take your sins lightly, misunderstanding the issues of faith and, and Tawheed, it's an extremely dangerous affair. These major mistakes in creed and this distortion of the meaning of the above mentioned hadith can lead one to incorrectly understand Islamic monotheism or even worse, as is in the above case, can cause one to leave the fold of Islam or never truly enter it if they do not believe in the testimony of faith. This is why it's imperative for us to understand the meaning, the true meaning of La ilaha illallah. And there are many deviant or uh, there are many deviant explanations of the meaning of La ilaha illallah, meaning there are different ways in which people and sects explain La ilaha illallah. Sheikh Salih bin Fawzan Hafizullah Ta'ala said, the testimony of faith has been explained by many false explanations. Amongst them, that is the meaning there is no, uh, there is no one who is worshipped except Allah. This explanation is false because it means that every deity worshipped is Allah. And this will be clarified shortly. Also, some of them they explain, they say that its meaning is there is no creator except Allah. This is part of the meaning of the testimony of faith, but not the intended meaning because it only affirms Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship and it is not sufficient as 
that is the meaning of monotheism and that the pagans used to affirm. For example, you have Jews and Christians who believe that there is one God. So it is not sufficient to declare that Allah, that la ilaha illallah means that there is uh, no creator except Allah. Again, as the Sheikh said, that is only part of the meaning. Another distorted meaning that doesn't uh, encompass the true meaning is for those people who say that the meaning of la ilaha illallah is that there is no hakamiya or judgment except for Allah. This is also a part of the meaning of la ilaha illallah, but not the intended meaning. And it is not sufficient by itself since if a person singles out uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hakamiya alone while supplicating to other than Allah or directing any aspect of worship to anyone other than him, then he is not a monotheist. He is not from the people of Ahl Tawheed, from the Muwahideen. So the statement of Sheikh Salih bin Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, illustrates the importance of knowing the correct meaning of the testimony of faith. And that one uh, does not understand its meaning, or one who does not understand its meaning, is in danger regarding his or her creed. Sheikh bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala said, the one who utters this testimony, understanding its meaning, practicing what it requires openly and in secret, negating polytheism, meaning shirk, and affirming the worship of Allah while believing entirely what it includes and applying it is a true monotheist, meaning is a true Muslim. So whoever utters it and practices openly what it requires, but does not believe in what it entails, then he is a hypocrite. Finally, the one who utters the testimony of faith uh, with his tongue and practices shirk, which contradicts and nullifies it, then he is a disbeliever. Even if he uttered it 1,000 times, because his actions nullified his testimony of faith. And this is incredibly important for us to realize that there are things, there are beliefs and statements that can take us outside the fold of Islam, just as the testimony of faith brings us in the fold of Islam. So with that testimony of faith, we have to abide by its conditions. We have to know and understand the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Sheikh Hafid al-Hakami explained, then if someone says there is nothing that is worshipped that exists except Allah, then it necessitates that everything that is worshipped, whether it has the right to be worshipped or not, is Allah. Then it includes everything that the polytheists worship, meaning the sun, the moon, the stars, the trees, the stones, the angels, the prophets and saints, also anything else worshipped. All of these things are Allah according to this definition of la ilaha illallah. Therefore, all of this would be considered monotheism. And this is the greatest and most evil type of disbelief. So here the Shaykh was explaining that we have to realize the true meaning of la ilaha illallah. The meaning of la ilaha illallah is there is no God that has the right to be worshipped except Allah. And this statement has two pillars. They are, uh, first and foremost, negation. That there is no God. That is, an, that is negating all that is worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second part of that phrase is an affirmation. Meaning, except uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say, illallah, accept Allah. This affirms that uh, all worship is for Allah alone and he has no partners. We move on to the conditions of the testimony of faith, which is the crux of, what I'm, uh, of this lecture. The testimony of faith is the key to paradise. And every key has teeth which allow it to function properly and open a door. Similarly, the testimony of faith has conditions which should be in place for one to enter the fold of Islam. Hassan al-Basri, a tabi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala, said to al-Farazdiq, while he was burying his wife, he said, what did you prepare for this day? 
He said, I testified that there was one God worthy of worship for 70 years. Then Hassan said, what an excellent, uh, what an excellent preparation. However, la ilaha illallah has conditions. And be careful of slandering the righteous women, as this is a dangerous sin which destroys one's good deeds. Then it was said to Hassan, Verily the people say, Whoever says la ilaha illallah will enter paradise. Then he said, Whoever says la ilaha illallah, fulfilling its conditions and requirements, will enter paradise. Wahab bin Munabbih was asked, Isn't la ilaha illallah the key to paradise? He said, Yes. However, there isn't a key that exists without teeth. Therefore, if you come with a key that possesses teeth, it will open for you, and without it, it will not open. These two narrations illustrate the importance of the conditions for the testimony of faith. And that the classical scholars of Islam considered it insufficient to just utter the testimony of faith without comprehension of its conditions. And this is what the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ exemplify. The testimony, as the scholars have uh, de de deduced for us, the testimony of faith has seven conditions. And each condition will be explained and expanded upon and some of the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah will be presented. And this will be in order to clarify the most critical pillar of Islam. And the conditions of La ilaha illallah are as follows. The first being knowledge. The second being certainty. And the third being sincerity. And then truthfulness and love. And strict obedience and acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands. Moving on to the first condi uh, condition of the testimony of faith, which is knowledge. Knowledge is the first condition of the testimony of faith because in order to believe in something, one must understand it and have knowledge of it. Knowledge of Allah is a crucial part of the of uh, tawheed, of monotheism. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتابه الكريم So know that no one has the right to be worshipped except Allah and seek forgiveness for your sins and the believing men and women. Shaykh uh, Al-Sa'adi says in his explanation of this verse that this knowledge that Allah has commanded to attain is the knowledge of Tawheed, which is an obligation upon all of mankind. Al-Kharisi says, the main point of this verse being knowledge, because it proves that knowledge precedes speaking, meaning pronouncing the shahada, and speaking about the religion. And one does not begin something except by starting with it, that which is most important, then that which is of lesser importance. Therefore, it is not permissible to speak or act until after one has knowledge. The knowledge that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah only comes about through learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship, about his divine names and attributes, and learning how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. This is what Tawheed is. Those are the categories of Tawheed. These three aspects form the basis for the categories in which the science of Tawheed has been traditionally divided. The three overlap and are inseparable to such a degree that whoever omits any one aspect has failed to complete the requirements of Tawheed. These three categories form the basis of Islamic monotheism. And that is why it is a requirement to attain knowledge of them in order to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly. Knowledge must be affirmed by the heart, by believing that Allah exists, and affirming that He alone should be worshipped. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabi al karim illa man shahida bil haqq wa hum ya'lamun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, except those who bear witness to the truth 
and they know the meaning of Allah, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's monotheism. Shaykh Sa'adi says about the one who utters the testimony of faith that it entails pronouncing with his tongue, affirming in his heart, and understanding what he testifies to. Also, it is a condition that he testifies to the truth, which is affirming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's monotheism. Al-Khurisi said regarding the above verse, the knowledge is a condition of their testifying to the truth. Because testifying to something is not possible except after possessing knowledge of it. Then how is it possible to worship Allah the Almighty when it is His right upon us except based upon knowledge, which precedes actions of worship? The Prophet wasallam said, There does not exist a slave that dies and he testifies that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah except that Allah will prohibit him from the hellfire. This hadith illustrates the importance of the testimony of faith and that whoever believes in his heart based upon knowledge will be protected from the hellfire. However, one must also strive to have good deeds as simply uttering the testimony of faith is not sufficient because the heart, the tongue, and the limbs all make up faith. The Prophet wasallam said in an authentic hadith, he said, whoever, seeks, uh, whoever sees evil, then change it with his hand. And if he is unable to do so, then with his tongue. And if, if he is unable to do so, then with his heart, and that is the weakest form or the weakest level of faith. So it is not sufficient to dis declare one believes or carry belief in, uh, in your heart without actions of the limbs. Knowledge of who Allah is and how to worship Him properly is essential for all of mankind. This condition of the testimony of faith is especially critical because if one remains ignorant of meaning, of the meaning that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, they cannot truly believe and testify to its significance. The Prophet ﷺ said in this regard, whoever dies and knows that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah will enter paradise. Imam al we said in this explanation of the hadith that firstly we affirm that the way of Ahl Sunnah by consensus from the pious predecessors and the people of hadith and jurists is that the people of sin are at the mercy of Allah the Almighty. And everyone who dies possessing faith, testifying sincerely from their heart that the testimony of faith, meaning the shahadatain, went to paradise. However, it is important to point out that although a believer who commits major sins will enter paradise, he or she may also spend time in the hellfire for the sins that they committed in this life. The punishment of the major sinner is at the discretion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he wills, he or she will be forgiven and pardoned or punished. This is at the discretion of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from uh, our own sins and protect us from the hellfire. Some of the lessons that we gain from the first condition of, uh, of the shahada, which is knowledge, is number one, that knowledge negates ignorance. Secondly, that knowledge of the meaning of the testimony of faith is essential. Also, the knowledge referred to here refers to the understanding that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And that includes all acts of worship. Fourthly, faith is comprised of belief, actions, and speech and varies from person to person and increases and decreases. Fifth, Belief requires knowledge, and the more knowledge uh, a person acquires about Islam while acting in accordance with it, the stronger one's faith becomes. The second uh, pillar, or the second condition of the testimony of faith, la ilaha illallah, is certainty, is that a person must have certainty. Certainty is the second condition of the testimony of faith. Man, one must be certain of the meaning of there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this rids one of any doubts 
regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's monotheism. Until knowledge is complete, it becomes impingent that one has no doubt or uncertainty about the meaning of there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and the falsehood of gods other than Allah, the Almighty. Therefore, even if one has limited knowledge about all the aspects of monotheism, he should still possess certainty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness before entering or before uttering the testimony of faith which enters them in the fold of Islam. This implies that he or she has no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and has no partners and should not be worshipped through an intermediary, intermediary as Christians do when they pray to Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam. And we find that also unfortunately many Muslims have followed the way of the people before us as the Prophet sallallahu let us know that, let, uh, that we would follow the way of, of the people who came before us. He, he said this, the Prophet sallallahu said, تَتَبِعُونَ السُّنَنْ مِنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ حُدْوَ قُدْلَتِي بِالْقُدْلَةِ حَتَّ لَوْ دَخَلُوا جُحْرَ دُبْ لَا دَخُوتُمُوهُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that you would follow the way of those people who came before us hand span by hand span. Even if they entered the hole of a lizard, you would follow them. And this is the case of the ummah today that many of us have followed the ways of the Jews and Christians by even committing shirk and believing that it's tawheed going to the grave and seek, seeking uh, making tawassal from the dead seeking intercession from the dead seeking intercession from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and going to his grave supplicating to him asking for him to help you this is not from Islam this is the sunnah of the people who followed us before who went astray. One of the evidence regarding this condition, meaning the condition of having certainty from the Quran, is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, only those are the believers who have believed in Allah and His Messenger, and afterward doubt not, but strive with their wealth and their lives for the cause of Allah, those are the truthful ones. So that shows us that we have to be certainty. This verse refers to those who claim that they had full faith but had very little knowledge. So although they possessed some faith and had a level of certainty, they were not considered full believers. This illustrates that faith has different levels and people vary in their level of faith depending upon the knowledge they possess. Certainty and the deeds that they perform. So one uh, so one's certainty increases as their level of, no uh, of knowledge increases. And before one proclaims the testimony of faith, they should uh, have certainty and knowledge and belief in its meaning. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the believers as those whose faith is complete. However, that does not mean someone with less faith is a disbeliever, but rather is considered one who has weaker belief. This is incredibly important that Ahlul Sunnah believes that although a person may, uh, a believer may have fallen into sins, they're still a believer. That means they're just weak in uh, their belief, that their, their, their sins have overcome them, but they're still a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're still a Muslim and have the rights of a Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, I testify that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that I am the messenger of Allah. There will not be a slave that meets Allah and testifies to this without expressing doubt except that he will enter paradise. This hadith illustrates that the one who has certainty in the testimony of faith and what it entails will enter paradise. And this hadith is evidence that certainty is a condition of the testimony of faith. However, one who expresses doubt in the belief of Allah will enter the, hell, uh, will enter the hellfire as this is disbelief, which negates sound faith. 
So it's imperative that you have certainty in your belief about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your belief in everything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa came with and everything about your Lord and everything he told us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes, about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about his own divine attributes. We believe in them and have certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about his help and assistance and a support for the believers. Some of the lessons that we gain from this, uh, from this condition of the testimony of la ilaha illallah, which is certainty. Number one, firstly, that certainty negates doubtfulness. Number two, the one who has certainty of the meaning of the testimony of faith will enter paradise. Thirdly, doubtfulness in the testimony of faith is, belief, uh, is disbelief. And fourthly, seeking refuge from doubtfulness regarding belief is an important trait of the believer. Meaning that the believer seeks refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from doubtfulness. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them from shak, from doubtfulness in their faith. Because as we know, as which is an important principle of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is that Ahlul Sunnah believes that faith increases and it decreases. That sometimes the believer is strong in faith. And sometimes the believer is weaker in faith. And that all of us make sins as the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khatayin tawabun. The Prophet ﷺ said, all the children of Adam, they make mistakes or they commit sins. But the best of those is those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the believer seeks refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from sins. And the believer seeks refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from doubtfulness because doubtfulness negates certainty. And certainty, certainty is a condition of the testimony of faith which enters one into the fold of Islam and which affirms the faith of the believer. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from having doubtfulness and protect us from weakness in Iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslims everywhere and bless us to increase our knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bless us to worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala on Basira. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.